CatRideCoach.com, we're looking at a routine case here, but there's going to be a surprise, and the surprise is that the anterior lens capsule is going to be wrinkly, and of course that indicates loose zonules. Now this patient doesn't have focally loose zonules, it's globally. All the zonules are just a little bit loose. There's the fill of the anterior chamber with our viscoelastic. We're going to make our main incision here on the steep axis. So there's the diamond keratome. We're going to make this incision right on the steep axis. And at the end of the case, we'll pair it with an opposite limbal relaxing incision at that same meridian, but on the nasal side. So now we've got the forceps here, and watch what happens. We poke in, and look at the wrinkles. Now we know for sure this patient has loose zonules. So we'll be very careful to tear a five millimeter capsule rectus. It'll be exact. Now remember, these are my forceps that I've designed, and they're marked off. The middle mark is two and a half millimeters from the tip, and the other one's five millimeters from the tip. So after creating this capsule rectus, which will be nice and round, we'll measure it, and you'll see it's exactly five, and we'll verify that at the end of the case. There's the rectus done, there's the measurement. So it's a five millimeter rectus. Now with loose zonules, I definitely want to bring the nucleus out of the capsule bag. So here's some hydrodissection. We'll do some hydrodissection, and I want the nucleus out of the bag. If the zonules are loose or weak, I don't want to have extra force on them. So we get the nucleus out of the bag. Now it's no longer exerting force on the zonules. Recoating the endothelium with dispersive viscoelastic. Now we'll take the phaco probe. We're going to use a high flow, high vacuum setting and moderate amount of phaco power. And we're going to use the phaco chopper in the left hand to break this nucleus into two halves. So putting the phaco probe in the eye, here's the chopper. We'll buzz into the nucleus, chopper goes around the equator to the other side, and there, split into two halves. Now each half can simply be just fed to the phaco tip. So again, we're using a very mild amount of power here, focusing on occluding the phaco tip with the lens material and letting the high vacuum do most of the work. So again, Removing the first half of the nucleus, the chopper is just pushing the pieces forwards, and that looks good. We're just about down that first half. There is some epinuclear shell that's obscuring the view a little bit, but you'll see that'll soon come out, and we'll have a nice, very clean view. Again, bringing the second piece up, the chopper goes around the equator, we can split that again. We're trying to work at about the iris plane. We don't want to get too close to the corneal endothelium, so this is not anterior chamber. It's actually right at the iris plane, and again, another chop. There you go, and the nucleus has been split. And then emulsify these pieces. Notice the position of the chopper now in the safe position. So with the smooth back end of the chopper towards the posterior capsule, we need to make sure that the posterior capsule, of course, is protected at all times. Last little bits of lens material and epinuclear shell coming out now. And again, you see the positioning of the chopper in the safe mode. There's the last bit of it, it looks great. Just about done. Couple little scraps left. We can try get out with the phaco probe, and that looks beautiful. Now, when you do cortex removal, so irrigation aspiration is our next step. We have to be very careful not to exert force on the zonular structures. And here's what we're going to do. Let me show you. We're going to watch the capsular rectus edge very carefully as we do the cortex removal. Why do we watch the rexus edge? We need to make sure it's not going to move. Of course, you don't want to see the capsular bag equator. If you've pulled that strongly, that means you've damaged the zonules. And we're going nice and slowly, so slower than I'd normally proceed um, in a case like this, and that's because of the zonular apparatus. There's the little last bit of it here, removing the subincisional cortex, and now we'll clean up the capsular bag. Now there's a balance here. We want to clean up the undersurface of the capsular bag, so we're doing some capsule polishing here, but we've got to be incredibly delicate because too aggressive on the capsule polishing can lead to a break in the posterior capsule. So I'm pretty happy with this right here. We'll zoom in there. There's our rexus. We're going to do a little more cleanup of the cortex, a little higher vacuum, go towards that posterior capsule very gently, Trying to remove that central plaque. There's a little central plaque there. Oops. There was the capsule. We quickly reacted to that and came off. So we're looking pretty good here. Let's fill our capsular bag with our dis uh, cohesive viscoelastic. There it is. And you can see the posterior capsule looks nice and clean. There is a vitreous floater there, which we're not going to worry about, of course. 
And now it's time for our lens. Single piece acrylic lens. We're going to place it right in the capture bag. And so here we go, delivering the lens. It goes in right there into the capture bag. And we'll use our chopper now to make sure that the entire eyewall is nicely seated in the capture bag and to help the two haptics unfold. I'm going to rotate the lens as well. That helps to clean up any material in the capsule bag equator. And we're also looking very carefully to make sure that the uh, capsule rex is still round. As we saw in earlier videos, if the capsule rex becomes oval, that's an indication of truly terrible zonules. And this isn't too bad. Going under the eye well to remove the viscoelastic, we want to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic in the eye. We can remove that. And now in front of the eye well as well. And we can remove a remainder of the viscoelastic. Now, of course, with the zonules being a little loose, you know what we're going to see? We've seen this in previous videos. We're going to see a wrinkling of the posterior capsule. There it is. See that horizontal wrinkling across? And that wrinkling, that line is always lined up with the haptics. So there's that wrinkling, and that's because of the lens being in the capsule bag and this patient having loose zonules. So we'll seal up the incisions and we're going to reposition the lens so we have a nice 360 degree overlap of the optic. So sealing the incisions here. Now one thing that's going to be interesting in this case, you see my ink mark there temporally as well as nasally. That's marking the 180 degree meridian. As I'm finishing this case here, I see that there's a little fiber, or appears to be a fiber in the incision here temporally. But it turns out, I'll show you, I'm going to zoom in on this, it's not really a fiber. It's just part of the ink that was uh, brushed off from that temporal mark. So here I'm trying to wash out the incision. I see a tiny fiber there. I'll zoom into a high magnification shortly and show you that. We're going to even try again with the IA probe, trying to just get that one area, get this, what appears to be a little fiber, but it's not. It's actually part of this ink from this temporal dot. Again, trying to wash it out of the incision. I have the infusion going very high flow right at the incision. I just can't seem to wash it out. And so now we'll get the forceps even. So I'll get the caps rex forceps and trying to grab what I think looks like a little fiber. And I grab it and I grab again and I just can't get it out of the eye. And so this is not actually a fiber. It's just some of this ink that's stained on the corneal stroma there within the incision. So we'll seal up the incision. I'm going to reposition the lens, get it beautifully centered. And again, that wrinkle down the middle, that's our indication. This patient certainly has a loose capsule bag and loose zonules. I can center it where I want to, seal the incision, and that looks great. Now, of course, there's a little parallax there. You see the Burkinji images, so this lens is actually perfectly centered. And we'll put a little bit of medication in the eye as well. So they're centering the lens, that's just BSS, and now there's a little triamcinolone. That's preservative-free triamcinolone. We put only a half milligram in the anterior chamber. We put a little um, more BSS. And then finally, we're going to put some moxifloxin preservative-free just in the stroma and then a little bit inside the anterior chamber, intracamerally. Now zooming in, now look, I'll show you, there's that little fiber, or it appears to be a fiber, Again, that's actually not a foreign body. That is simply um, ink from that temporal spot that has been smudged into the corneal stroma. So again, we're unable to get that out, and I don't worry. I give that a little bit of time. It'll go away. So sealing up everything here looks pretty good. Checking the pressure. Get the pressure up a little higher. Making sure that's good. And now a sponge with some tetracaine to make sure the eye is nice and numb. And then opposite the main phaco incision, at about the 20 degree mark, we're going to make a opposing limbal relax incision. So that's going to be right opposite the main incision, and that's going to help neutralize the astigmatism. This patient's going to have a beautiful outcome, and uh, thank you for watching.